no matter where I am, if I'm with the violin, it's like I'm with home. The violin's been my companion since I was 11 years old. Like, every day in my life, for most of the day. It's good to be back. And especially for me, I miss my teacher too much. <laughs> Australia is very isolated. And so in the, in the musical world, this makes things a little bit difficult. And the best music schools are really in Europe and in North America. So I really wanted to go and study abroad probably since I was about 12. And then it was a matter of deciding where to go. And thankfully I had um, support from West Australian government and a couple of other foundations who helped me go and travel and, and find places and find teachers. But I, I had seen places and sort of liked them, but I hadn't had something where I thought, I have to go there. then I didn't think I would be able to afford to come here because it's incredibly expensive for out-of-state tuition, but then also the cost of moving overseas and uprooting everything. That was when the Wells Scholarship came in and I'm so grateful for their support. So me coming here has sort of been a succession of miracles, really. In that way, my family were really thrilled. Somehow we managed to make it work. <laughs> Sometimes people do say to me, oh, why did you choose Bloomington and not London or something like that? But it's, it's been wonderful here and I, there's nowhere else where I'd rather be at the moment. This semester has been really wonderful and really exciting for me because um, we've been preparing for international competitions, violin competitions, and so it's been a, a lot of hard work. Basically, you send a tape and if you, they select about a dozen people to go and compete. It's through this that you would get enough artistic exposure to make some kind of career if you sort of start building them up. Actually, I had got in touch with the head of the recording studio and she said, yeah, we'd be happy to, to record you. We're trying to do it with just two mics, no spot mics. Uh, it's the most important thing, uh, with apologies to the pianist, is the violin in this. After all, it is the violin concerto. Though you know the, original... the problem is because you have to send in a complete take. It can be a little frustrating if something goes wrong and you go, oh, no, I have to do it all over again. Um, so that was almost four hours solid of playing with a 10 minute break of lunch in the middle. Bring those mics up just about another six inches and roll the Omnis down about a foot. But it was, a, it was a really good thing to do. The facility is fantastic. I've learnt so much from it and I've just sent my first audition tape away. So we'll see what the results are. And you know, if I get into one of them, you get to go to somewhere like Switzerland, which would be really nice. <laughs> Somehow, that music started taking over my life. I don't quite know how it happened. There was one key moment for me, it must have been about nine years old, when I heard the Max Bruchs, first violin concerto for the first time and 
Before then, I had always been a sort of reluctant practicer. Then when I heard this piece of music, and it was so beautiful, and this is like a, a wriggling nine-year-old who's been dragged along to a concert and who doesn't want to be there at, you know, 8 p.m. at night. I was just, I remember being transfixed, and I remember thinking at the end, I have to play this one day. It's the feeling of, of playing with an orchestra behind you. It's like when I walk on stage and you see it, like there are really bright lights, so you can't really see the audience much. But you see them and you think, these people are here to see me play. And it's very touching, really, and humbling as well, to be able to share that with other people and to have them enjoy it. There's nothing like it, really, nothing like it in the world. I think, like, the idea of home for me is because I've, you know, spent so much time away from home for me and spent quite a lot of time travelling is not so much about physical things or material things, but the way I feel in them. And especially for me, because when musically I'm stimulated and I have so many things to do, M musically, wonderful things to do. That's what makes it feel at home, because I'm so happy to be here doing this, these sorts of things. And really small things, like, like that, that having a teapot also makes you feel at home. Maybe that's my English half coming out of me, but everything's better with a cup of tea. <laughs>